Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Say hi, Catherine. Hi, Terry. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we chatted about the latest episode on our West Wing Watch and the West Wing Weekly podcast episode that went with it. But first, Dancing with the Stars is back! Yay! So, we watched the first episode of Season 27 of Dancing with the Stars, and it seemed like there were 27 couples to watch (laughs) dance. It just went on and on and on. They kept coming. It was an endless onslaught of sparkly uh, dancers. I felt like they were all pretty decent for the first week and all fairly likable. There didn't seem to be very much drama other than Bobby Bones going a little nuts when he finished his dance. But still, yeah. that was that was amiable drama. That was not annoying drama. At least I didn't think so. Mm-hmm. And everybody just seemed real happy to be there. It seemed like they all had seen the show and knew what they were getting in for. And uh, so... It was both enjoyable and just sort of a blur. (laughs) There were so many of them. So many that they really didn't have time to do anything. You know, there was the one opening number, Mm -hmm. but then that was it. Like, everything else had to be devoted to just (laughs) getting them out there one after the other. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. And they saved, like, no, they saved, I guess, the football guy and... and, uh, the bachelor, mm-hmm. bachelor guy till the end, and I completely <laughs> forgotten them. Even though I like Lindsay, and I'm usually all about Lindsay, I completely forgotten she hadn't gone. So, oh yeah, wait, shoot, what happened yeah. to her? And I mean, Nancy McKeon was like the first person announced in in the run up to the show, and she was yeah. one of the last to go, and I completely forgot she was there. Um, yes. So a lot of I did did anybody particularly stand out to you? It was really hard for me to to figure out who to vote for because they they were all okay and a lot of you know there were a lot of really low judges scores, mm-hmm. uh, but they all seemed relatively okay to me. I you know it's and I had to go back and say you know if anything kind of stuck out, but uh, I thought all okay. I thought Demarcus was fun to watch. He's the football player with Lindsay. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought Tinashe mm-hmm. was like she was so polished as yeah. to be like cold. Does that uh-huh. if that makes sense? Like yeah. she was like going through the motions really, really well. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. Like that. <laughs> so I don't know. Um and you know, Danielle, the blind skier, yeah. I thought it was very simple, but it was yes. graceful. Yes. My favorite you know? part of that was, was Bruno gesturing to show her different things Use she should do. Use these muscles, not these muscles. Like, okay, <laughs> that's going to work well for you, Bruno. Use your words, Bruno. <laughs> nice um, try. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was, the, you know, she was fine. She did well for her first week, I thought. I uh, The chat... I was following during the show. I always go on Annie Barrett's uh, blog and and follow the chat that's there. It's always very fun. But they were all feeling as though the though her her dog needs some sort of sparkly harness. That the <laughs> right. dog was underdressed and that that <laughs> needed to be addressed immediately. <laughs> so see. look for that next week. Yes. <laughs> and I thought. Ivana, 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 yeah. um, the one from Harry Potter. With the Potter. cute Irish accent. Yeah, I thought that she was a good dancer, and then Len gave her a five. I know, the scores and, were brutal. And then for cases. her, I just worry, like, who's going to vote for her? She doesn't have 12 million followers on Instagram, well, but doesn't sure. she have the entire world of Harry Potter? Are, aren't all the Harry Potter fans going to vote for her? She she's better not, hope. It's not, she's not like a big character, though. I mean... Yeah, I don't know how associated she is with her, because I, looking around the internet in the run-up to the show, a lot of people were like, who? And then somebody would say, oh, she was Luna Lovegood in Harry Potter. Oh, oh, yeah, I remember her. So if you kind of didn't know that she was going to be on it and were excited for that, 
she might just float on by. Yeah, she could be at risk, I guess. Um, I really, you know, but the, you were mentioning um, Lindsay's partner and Demarcus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Tanashi, Tanashi, um, <laughs> whose partner is she? Brandon's partner. Brandon. Uh, mm-hmm. I think by the time it just got to that point in the show, it was just I had dance fatigue or something. They didn't really stand out to me. I remember some of the earlier ones better. I really liked Milo. When he came out and started Mm -hmm. dancing, I yelled to Lena, Hey, Milo's got some game. He looks really good. He's not, you know, he's no Jordan, but he looked, I thought he looked great. And then the judges were all, meh. Yeah. Um, And uh, I thought he was cute. I mean, he's 17, you know. Yeah. I mean, he, I thought he acquitted himself quite well. He did. I thought he looked really, really good. Um, and uh, I did enjoy Bobby Bones. I think he might be my, uh, a little bit of a rooting interest. Just as I just enjoy somebody being that enthusiastic about it and it seemed genuine. <laughs> and, you know, he's got radio, he's got radio fans. That's what radio fans want to see is their guy being nuts. So, so nuts. That I was kind know. of fun. It was a little bit more than I... <laughs> <laughs> and I thought his dance was kind of all over the place, too. It was, like, kind of. But for somebody who hasn't danced before, I thought he did very well. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Because you like Sharna a lot. I do like Sharna. And the costumes kind of matched her hair in a way. They really way. did. <laughs> and so did Aaron's. Aaron was, like, coordinated yes. with them. Yes, she was. She oh. was. Very nice. And I thought Nancy did way better than I expected her to. From all the advance stuff and from their little package, I really wasn't expecting much. She, she like, I guess once she was on stage, she sort of snapped into into showbiz mode. I, I well, like what and, she did. And what? Why would Val start her with a quick step? Well, I yeah, that was. I the only things I can think of are, I mean, do do the pros pick? What they do? I don't know. Yeah. Why would anyone and the make other thing her do the quick step first? Be, I feel he, like that's hard. Yeah. If he doesn't think she's ever going to do it well, if you do it the first week, everybody's going to say, oh, it was the first week. That was too uh, hard. Yeah. That's true. And, you know, also, she's got one of the higher name recognitions, at least amongst viewers of a certain age. So he may feel she's got a week or two. And so burn off the dances that are going to be hardest then. Mm-hmm. So that was what I thought. I was amused by how clothed she was yeah. in in on the show and also in all the packages and in everything I've seen of her for this thing. She's always got sleeves. Mm-hmm. Um, even at the beginning when they all had the coordinated little costumes and stuff, hers had sleeves. So mm-hmm. she's like clearly in her contract, sleeves are <laughs> specified. Sleeves so I wonder if it'll be one be of those things like provided. at a certain point in the season – even the out of shape and, um, you know, less macho celebrities have to take their shirt off. The guys mm-hmm. have to take their shirt off. I wonder with her at some point, she's going to have to have, you know, <laughs> she's going to have the sleeves are going to come gonna off. She's going to have to go sleeveless. <laughs> she's going to have the breakaway Ooh. sleeves at the end of her dance. She'll pull them off. Maybe she could get like a, like a muscly armed, uh, long sleeve t-shirt to be the same as like David Ross had when he had to take right, a show. Right. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what the story is about the sleeves, but there's definitely a story. So, uh-huh. um, and I, you know, I, I found them all mostly enjoyable. I have no real cutting comments to make, uh, except that, that, that grocery store Joe was indeed the worst. <laughs> At some point, and he Alexis- just kind of gave up. Alexis, um, somebody got real aggressive with the spray tan. (laughs) Yeah. It was, like, distractingly (laughs) significant. I'm sure she's a lovely girl, but I just, you know, professional social media people of an extremely young age just make me feel elderly. That was the chat I was on. Somebody was like, get off my lawn when she came in. <laughs> right. Well, and then who's her partner, Al? And he's like, I have 13,000 followers. <laughs> she says, oh, I have 12.7 million. <laughs> How is that even possible? I know. I know. Good question. This makes me feel like like bad Janet in the Good Place podcast. <laughs> right. How, how is that even Possibly. Right. Uh, Even a thing. 
Is that even a thing, really? Young people, find something better to do. Uh, and uh, uh, John Schneider. He was yes, the only I... one my husband really wanted to watch just to see what he looks like now. And he, he well, and you know, I feel that using the Dukes of Hazard theme song in week one is it is not a sign of optimism. No, no, that's exactly <laughs> that's what I was explaining to my husband. It's like people who have a strong association with something, you either want to use it later in the season to give them a bump, say Alfonso Ribeiro doing the what is the dance that one Carlton the, doing the Carlton. Yes. And then some people, you want to get it out there the first week, just in case. And that is certainly what they were doing. It's that like, we don't... Maybe your only chance. <laughs> You're not going to be able to save this for my most memorable year. We're very sorry. <laughs> we think we better... We paid for the song. We're going to use it now. Uh-huh. And the car. And uh, I liked I liked Emma's costume for that. It was like... A, a lot of fabric for a pro costume on this show. <laughs> yes. God bless. It looks very cute on her. Mm-hmm. Um, and looks uh, like it might be hard to dance in. Honestly, that's true. That's true. But she, you know, but she did gamely she's soldiered a pro. on. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, and Mary Lou. Mary Lou didn't do that well. I didn't think she was the first, right? Yeah, she was the very first she's, one. Yeah. Uh, you know. Hello, nice to see you. You can leave whenever you like. <laughs> and uh, and Juan Pablo certainly looked good. You know, he is eye candy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very efficiently. I, I thought that Cheryl did more dancing there than he did. Yeah. And that he maybe should have been able to do more because he certainly seemed to know how to move. But uh, And he even had the mists. Yes. <laughs> They deployed the mist. They deployed right out of the, the gate. mist right out of the gate. That doesn't seem right. Oh, mm-hmm. Let's see who have we missed here. Um, oh, the, uh, Nikki, the comedian. I thought she was pretty stiff. Yes, yes. It's too bad because she was very funny, sort of in the lead up to it, but mm-hmm. just, just kind of deer in the headlightsy in her actual dancing. Right. Um, but all these people could well do better in future weeks. They all yeah. seem. A perfectly agreeable. There's nobody I felt like that person has to go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which I agree. is which is nice, I think. Although maybe it makes for a boring season. I don't know. We'll have to see if everybody's just sort of amiably there. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, did you? Who did you pick for your? Did you vote? Are you going to vote at this I point? I haven't voted yet, but I will. Um, gosh, I don't. I don't know. I know it's just like, there's too many choices. There is too many choices at this yeah. point in the season. And, and there's 13 couples and you can vote 13 times. Like, yes. Well, that seems... <laughs> I liked them all! <laughs> uh, that seems inefficient. <laughs> yeah. I voted my... I, I divided my votes relatively evenly between Milo, Nancy... Um, who else? Danielle. Danielle, uh, Bobby. Yeah, I guess those four. I gave I gave Bobby four and the rest of them three. Okay. So, and as I looked at all the rest of them, I was like, you are perfectly fine, but these are the four that I guess stood out to me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and that probably needed votes more than the others, I think. Um, of, of others that I liked, so. Right. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens very quickly because right, there's because another gonna... episode of this on Tuesday. As as you are listening to this, listeners, if you are prompt in your listening, uh, there's another episode today. So what we're going to do is have a little speed round on Wednesday devoted to the Tuesday episode. So we will not do a whole another round two. We will not hold up our round twos for Wednesday, but any week where they do a, a Monday and a Tuesday of Dancing with the Stars our Wednesday speed round will be about that Dancing with the Stars episode. Bonus Dancing with the Stars. Yes, with the elimination. So there's going to be, I'm unsure how many eliminations there are going to be. Yeah, good question. They it would not be us. a bad idea for them to prune a couple. but mm-hmm. I mean, a couple of couples. Yes. But I don't know. They, they said something about live voting. Oh, really? To be able to save your couple. So oh, I don't know if they're going to eliminate somebody based on tonight's vote, on Monday night's votes, 
and then somebody based on Tuesday or what? Yeah, good question. It'll be a mystery, but they are going to also show the cast for Dancing with the Stars Juniors, which I could swear I saw like weeks ago a Twitter stream that had all the actual contestants. And then since then, it's been all like, we don't know who the contestants are. So either that got, got somebody got an early yeah, word and lo- put it I out. I remember looking yeah, at them yeah. with you. So either, either it leaked accidentally or somebody got early word and was putting it out there that wasn't supposed to be or what, but Mm. let's just wipe that from our minds so we can be surprised on Tuesday night. (laughs) Okay. We interrupt this podcast to remind you to please consider the free Radio Public app for all your parenting roundabout listening needs. If you listen to our podcast on the app, we'll get paid a little for each listen and more if you listen a lot. It's a great way to financially support our podcast without having to actually spend, you know, money. Now, back to the episode. Well, sashaying away from that to our West Wing uh, watch, uh, we this week had Season 5, Episode 15, Full Disclosure, which brought us back Hoynes. You remember Hoynes? I remember Hoynes. Hey, Tim <laughs> Matheson. Nice. You got a paycheck today. You're a little short <laughs> on your house payment. You said, could you write Hoynes into something for like one scene? Sure. And there he is. So, okay. <laughs> I, you know, there's some things I liked a lot about this episode. I, I liked seeing CJ handling things. I liked the bit about Charlie. I agree. It was sort of an easy setup, as they said on the West Wing Movie Podcast. But I still liked it. I liked Dulé Hill having something to do. I liked yeah. seeing the the guy who played the mayor. I, you know, it was, it was, I liked that plot. I even kind of liked Ryan in this. I kind of enjoyed the little fake out he did with Josh and, and the maneuver. And, um, that was good. I did not mind that. You know what I hated? Well, <laughs> I hated what? a couple of things. First, I hated <laughs> that after I had smugly said that I skipped the episode last week because I didn't want to see CJ sparring with the talk show guy. They opened this episode with CJ Spard with a talk show guy. Ha ha ha. Right, Terry, you, went and you have back. to watch this one. Like, Did she? Why? I assumed, why, why? see, because I didn't watch the last one. I assumed this was the same episode, that it was still, she was still there. But you're saying that she went, she was wearing oh. different stuff. You think she went back again. They did on the podcast think she went back again, which why would she go back again? I, I thought it was I, just to pick up I the same one. I just assumed that she. Went back a second time, although I thought that was crazy. Yes. Um, but I didn't go so far as to check her clothing to huh. see. Yeah, I, I, you know, have not watched the other one. But you know what? They they tried to trick me into watching it. Fast forward. I'm through it. <laughs> so that was wonderful. And the other thing I really hated, and I, it, they seemed just perfectly fine with it on the West Wolfley podcast, but do not... Do not retcon a fling with CJ and Hoynes that has never come up before. You know what? The secrets thing, not so much. You don't get to do that with characters we've been really closely following for five seasons. Oh, by the way, did we mention that she and this character we've seen her with whole bunches of times with no indication of it had this thing? No. (laughs) Lawrence O'Donnell, no. It does not work. You don't get to do that. Stop. I I gotta say that he did not make a good impression on the podcast. Man, did he not? I'm like, <laughs> we're pretty pleased with ourselves, aren't we? Yeah, no. Oh my joke. god. Well, I'm glad like, it wasn't just me feeling that I was gonna mention that, but he just seemed I mean, I'm I'm also suspicious of, of people who come on here and are all John Wells, John Wells, John Wells, John Wells, so much better now, so much better now. And I'm like, wow, you never want to yeah. work with Aaron Sorkin again, do you? It's like there's a way to do it. There's a way to say the Sorkin time was wonderful and there were so many strengths at that time. This was different and there were good things about that too. Mm-hmm. But the people who want to kiss John Wells's body parts and you know forget that somebody else was like the creator and visionary yeah. behind it. Not a good look. And mm-hmm. he just seemed oh, kind of insufferable. Yeah, he really did. I was ready to be done with him. Yes. I was about to consider telling you, like, remember how you skipped the episode? Yeah. <laughs> because you, like, this 
podcast might be skipping. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, I'm glad it wasn't just me thinking that, but I was really ticked off on CJ's behalf by that. And also, the whole thing she's saying to him about when you run for president, all these women are going to come out. He did run for president. He was running for president when Bartlett picked him as vice president. He's gone through a whole thing of running for president. If these women were going to come out, would they not have done it then? Am I mm. right? He was running for president. <laughs> Unless this all happened later. No, well, it was supposed to be 10 years ago that she was flirting with him and she said he was, you know, he or they had her fling and he was already very oh. smooth with it. So it had to be before. Okay. The first election. Yeah. True. <laughs> so, like, this guy's going to be taking his first national campaign. <sighs> that old plot line just <laughs> ticked me off. I did. The only thing I did think was interesting was the part where they talked about um, Richard Schiff. Yes, that coming up with like a new, you know, yes. O'Donnell had written it, so Toby didn't know what she was talking about, and Richard Schiff was like, "No, he knows." Yes, um, and that was that was cool. And it's Richard Schiff adding some emotional depth to a stupid storyline. Yes, like. No, this has no value whatsoever. Let me let me do you a favor. <laughs> right. Let me, help let you me use it as a shading of CJ and Toby's relationship. Right. Because that is all it is good for. And so do you do is this it for Ben? Do we never saw him again? I didn't even remember we saw him again here. And boy, you know what? After after how many how many months or possibly years has she been brushing him off? Right. And now she calls up and says, just talk to I me. I need a favor. <laughs> I would say, you know what, Help lady? I've been trying to talk to you for right. 17 seasons. <laughs> and now, now you want me to do this? <sighs> but he's a good guy, you know? He's, he's good to just chat. Yeah, but I feel like we'll never. That's it. No. I yeah no I I do not remember him as being a meaningful part of this show, other than just something that's mentioned and mentioned and mentioned and nothing ever comes of it. Right. So, um, I can safely say without I don't think spoiling anything at all. At the end of the show, she does not wind up with Ben. <laughs> she does not go walking out into the DC sunset with, with ben. ben. But maybe Carol does. <laughs> that's true. You never know. We don't ever hear what happens. Carol, Carol. Carol may have a have a whole thriving love life that just never gets onto the show. So we're just going to imagine right. she winds up with Ben because she seems quite fond of him. She really does. She seems to, to enjoy him a great deal more than CJ does. Um, I, I liked <laughs> the thing with the, uh, was it Greg Brock was the reporter? Uh-huh. That they were saying the thing where he dropped the thing on the floor and then they're both staring at it. I liked that. I enjoyed that, actually. Yeah, I, I, you know, their their points of about it on the podcast are not necessarily wrong, and yet I still enjoyed it. You liked that he, you know, he. I liked them both sitting there staring <laughs> at the thing on the floor, and then having this conversation. It made me laugh. I was worried that you know, what if it was like version two, and and they actually published version sixteen, or like, <laughs> and what, what if, if there was a virus on that disc? She immediately slammed into the White House. <laughs> Right. Or Commu what if system. it was a decoy? You know, he he did it to see if she would steal it. And, and like, like the time Sam got a, got a tape and yes. he made, ran with it. And look what happened to him. Exactly. He's off the show. I was worried. I was worried yeah. for CJ. Yeah, I thought yeah, I was slightly when she just went and unquestionably stuck that thing in the computer. I would say, run that through the White House uh, <laughs> IT guys first, will you? Right. Uh, but I, I thought that the interplay w uh, between the two of them made it fairly clear that um, he, he was, was like, I'll give it to you. But these are the he terms. was giving it to her without going back on his I never give it to people. Right. Thing. right. And I thought that was cute. And it's like the first time I was watching it, I was, as I always do, multitasking. And it's like, wait, did he leave something on her desk? I didn't say. And then I had to rewind. Him. Oh, he oh, dropped yeah. it on the floor. He put it right there on the I floor. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I think it was through his his performance and hers, but especially his, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So it was, you know what, I watched the whole, except for that opening where they tried to trick me into watching the Jay Moore show again. <laughs> I watched the whole thing and enjoyed it. Good. But... Uh, I mean, in, enjoyed it except for my fury at the stupid, out of nowhere, CJ having had a fling with Hoynes. I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I do. It, 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 they had plenty full opportunity to have 
alluded to it before and did not. It just comes out of yeah, because they didn't need of, it before. <laughs> no, I uh, it just it's it's no. I, I don't. I don't. I think that you can have people have secrets. I don't think this is a secret you can have them have. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, if we had never seen Hoynes before, if he had just been mentioned, but there's been too much interaction. There's been other times it would have come up. I think. Right. I don't know. I don't like it. I think it was just giving one of our beloved characters something like that for no real reason other than it just seemed like it would be fun plot point. Mm-hmm. It's one of those, and and they never mention it again. Right. So, um, no. <laughs> I do not like. Don't mess with CJ. Right. But it did Don't give her the chance to go in there and... Tell I her, liked her tell otherwise her handling things. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you can, but there could have been other ways for that to come about. All right. Think. She could have known he did something and have kept quiet about it mm-hmm. or something like that. Right. There were other ways, right. I think. So, boo. Boo to that. <laughs> I say boo. But I agree with you, too, that it was nice to see Charlie have something to do for, yes. you know, a yes. few minutes. <laughs> like, yes. In and general, I enjoyed him coming in. And just talking exactly against what the president was saying. And that was one thing about the Lawrence O'Donnell thing on the podcast that I enjoyed is hearing him talk about the schools and mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, if you're just looking at it as big issues, you may feel one way. But when you're actually dealing with this child and saying, no, you cannot have this thing because big issue. Right. Um, it, it feels very different. Mm-hmm. I think that was a nice point to make. Yeah. 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 And they also mentioned on the podcast that Claire Claire Huddle, that's the character's name, right? The 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 woman who brought the the letter, the, the vice president's resignation in Life on Mars was there. I totally missed it. Probably I was looking at something else. Oh I'm yeah, I mean I the episode. It wasn't really multitasking, but I didn't I didn't pick that. They up. could have totally just made that up. But yeah. if indeed that was true, and it was the same actress, that is an extremely nice touch. Yes. Whatever whatever person in the continuity department thought of that, mm-hmm. gold star for you. <laughs> yes. Very, very nice. Very nice. Impressive. So. And that actress was not busy doing, like, CSI <laughs> Toronto or whatever. That's right. She was available. That's right. She was available. She's just been waiting. Right. You know? Waiting for that call. She'll Tim Matheson, if you ever go back, make sure they call me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh, she was hoping I have house that he payments too. She was hoping that he would run for president because then he'd need her for his staff. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well. All right, so that was this week's uh episode in our binge watch. Next week we will be watching episode sixteen, which has an Italian name that I am reluctant to say, but Webster's assures me that it is Epersimuove. So we will watch that. And we will watch the next episode of Dancing with the Stars. Yay! <laughs> and even even more, or at least as excitedly, even more exciting. Yes. The Good Place is back. Yay! Yes. Very exciting. So we will be talking about the uh, first episode of Season 3 of The Good Place next Yay. week on our good podcast. And don't forget, tomorrow, Wednesday morning, there will be a speed round devoted to... The Dancing with the Stars, I won't even call it an elimination episode because it's a full two-hour episode. So the second Dancing with the Stars this week, we shall talk about in a Wednesday speed round. So look for that in your podcast feeds. And that is going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so that you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.